Welcome, wandering souls and lost sailors, to the Ship of the Dead podcast. Welcome to the second episode of the Ship of the Dead. On this episode, I sit down with my brother and quartermaster, Tyler, as he plays not only Morkborg and Pirateborg for his first time, but any OSR game for the first time. His background is in 5th edition, and before that, Pathfinder and some Star Wars role-playing games. He's an experienced gamer and a notorious and very accomplished rules lawyer. Well, we attended Origins 2022 in Columbus, and I had Tyler both play in a pirate board game and then GM one the next day. The Ship of the Dead is brought to you by Patreon. Sign up at limithron.com slash Patreon for as little as $2 a month. You'll get early access to episodes, special Discord privileges, and of course, like 500 battle maps. Way anchor. We set sail. Are you ready? I'm ready, Luke. All right, welcome. I, we are here in our childhood home. I am with my brother, Tyler. Hi. Welcome to the podcast, Tyler. Uh, I'm super happy to be here. Thanks. Why are we here at our childhood home? We are back in Columbus, Ohio to go to Origins Game Fair in 2022 for some awesome Limithron Pirate Borg fun action. Yeah, we're going to play some games and hang out and talk about games. Is this going to be the first time you've run Pirate Borg in person? Yeah, wait. You know, I ran it at this table, actually. Oh, yeah, that's right. For the guys in Dopapod. Nice. We played uh, like a Halloween one shot. Well, this episode, the working title is From 5e to OSR, mm. and we are going to dive in what it's like to come into the OSR from 5e, specifically Pirate Borg, but just in general. So maybe we could start. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about your background as a role-playing game enthusiast? Yeah, sure. I have been playing role-playing games since I was 10 years old, when my brother, the person also talking to me right now, taught me to play Star Wars West End Games D6 edition, and I was hooked. I played Star Wars for 15 years. I love that. I love their source books. Yeah, they're, they're st- they still hold up, man. They're great. But I played that and played Star Wars D20 for a long time. And then I got into 3.5 and Pathfinder some. And then the new Star Wars movies came out. And I was like, bye, Star Wars. <laughs> it's like when you see the new Star Wars movies, that could be a couple different. Yeah, yeah. I guess I still played them during the prequels, but especially in the last seven years or so, I'm out of that. And when 5e came out, I thought that system was really clean. I played D&D here and there, but I've played Warhammer and all types of video games and all types of tabletop games my whole life. So anyways, uh, I, dig- I digress. Big 5e player now. Uh, you know, been in, I don't know, 20 campaigns or so since 5e came out, and uh, it's awesome. What kind of role-playing game player would you describe yourself as? I'm definitely the tank player. Maybe not the full min. Nah, I'm the min-maxer. You're, yeah, yeah, you're yeah I'm the min-maxer. Min-max. Yeah. I really like to hit in combat and have it matter. So if I'm like, oh, I hit, maybe, and I dealt D6 damage. No, no, no. I want to, like, smite for 37 damage at level 3, you know? Yeah, uh, and you also want to be, like, the troubled past guy in armor. That oh, yeah. I'm always wearing armor. Is secretly the yeah. hero. Like, oh, yeah. I want to be the main character of the story, of my own story. Yeah. Like Delanon from, or Delanor. Which one is it? I, I can't tell. because My character's name is Delanon. I get him confused now. From, <laughs> from Way of Kings. Yeah. From the Way of Kings. Is, uh, Delanar is his name. So, one thing that I think you're notorious for is writing oh. really long backstories. Yeah. And spending hours crafting your character. Yeah, right? that's definitely true. Minimum five hours per character I've played. So I'm curious how you're going to find the OSR because crafting your backstory doesn't matter when you have two hit points. Uh, I disagree, (laughs) Uh, but we'll see how I change that. Quick question, though. Can you please define OSR? Oh, the OSR, often referred to as the old school renaissance or the old school revival, is kind of a throwback to, like, I'd say basic expert era Dungeons and Dragons. Like when second edition came out, I think Mm -hmm. this is the era, there was another, like, we need a simpler box set to get kids into the game. Mm -hmm. But it actually ended up being a lot of people's favorite version of the game. Right. And this kind of like renaissance to that kind of role playing has kind of come around in the past, I don't know, five or 10 years. And one of these kinds of games, it's almost like post OSR at this point, but Morkborg is definitely one of those. Like post Malone or no relation? No relation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I'm curious, what kind of dungeon master would you consider yourself? 
I mean, is this a multiple choice question? No, I like, know, let's say <laughs> let's say someone's scrolling through the classified ads for an upcoming sure. campaign, and you have to pitch what okay. kind of DM you are. I would say I am a player backstory focused DM. For me as a DM, if the story isn't about the characters or their backstory, I kind of don't know why I'm running the mission. My least favorite thing to do is just open a totally stock story and be like, it doesn't matter who you are or where you came from or what you do. This is what's happening. So deal with it. I, I have run out of box adventures, but I would take them and change their whole story, you know, make them related to the villain or you know, it's their daughter, or whatever, so on and so forth. So as a dungeon master, do you like min-maxing characters, player characters, or metagaming characters? Those are two very different things. They're very different, but so, answer both. I would say I do like min-max characters. Do you like the challenge? Because I always like the challenge. Also, I always know how to mess with somebody. If <laughs> yeah. they're min-maxed, it's like, oh, if you're causing me a problem tank, I'm just going to hit you with a fireball and you can't dodge it because your yeah, dex is I, minus I, two. Exactly. Like, I see all these guys online that are like, my paladin has an AC 22. Why, what do I do? And people are like, dex saves. Just, yeah, dex save. save. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, like, controls mine, like, whatever, yeah. you know? So I... I appreciate when somebody min maxes and they role play it well for good reason. I appreciate that as a fellow player in GM, so it's not a problem. When people meta game, I will just be quick to call that out. It'll be like, you know that, but your character doesn't know that. So I don't yeah. think you'd make. I've only gotten an argument about it once where I was like, uh, sorry, you cannot do that. But it was fine. We just rolled the dice and moved What's on. your opinion on rules lawyers? I'm usually the worst rules lawyer at the table. I greatly appreciate when a player comes and they know their rules of their character. In fact, I would say it's required for a long-term camp. I pick my players being like, I don't want to have to explain the rules to you anymore. Like I want to play where we don't have to talk about the rules. So when it comes to a rules lawyer, I don't really want to get into a five minute discussion about the rules, even if they're right. I would rather just be like, sure, whatever you say, that's fine. That happens. Let's keep moving. Cause I want epic things to happen. I want the big bad to show up. I want to find out that Vader's your father. Like, I don't want to argue about how many milliseconds it takes for your lightsaber to turn on or how many swift actions you have left over. Although I will, if you're going to, you know, take me away from being able to do it. So I remember this bag. one year we were at, I think it was at Origins. Maybe it was Gen Con. And you were watching the official Wizards of the Coast booth DMs demo Star uh, Wars. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And the guy was demoing it, and yep. you came up and totally rules lured him about some exactly what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, I should have just shut the hell up and walked away. I thought it was really, I was really. But funny. he re he was explaining hit like their game to new people incorrectly. Yeah, and yeah. it really bothered. I was that was a yeah that really bothered me. Yeah. So yeah, so, I mean, so you're walking the line. A little I am a rules guy for sure. Yeah. But I also. Especially in my the older I get, and when, since I have a daughter, it's like I want to spend less time talking about the crunchy bits and more time developing cool story. Okay. Yeah. So with that in mind, what do you like about Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons? I like that they streamlined so many things that almost every class has like at level three, you get to specialize your character or you're a spellcaster and you come with a specialization already. It's a lot more streamlined in the, that way. And you don't have to read everything I'm saying. I'm realizing you're about to school me with, with OSR, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> That I like that you don't have to read, you know, five books to understand one character. It's a little bit easier. I mean, now that the game's been five, he's been out for a while. There's a lot of options, but compared to previous editions, I just played Pathfinder last week and my character has four pages of ability text so is the second edition or first a uh, first edition yeah. pathfinder which would be like equivalent of 3.5 sure. is four pages of just text of the different abilities he has available to him at level 10 and in 5e it's much more condensed and it makes it a lot faster through it all so it's a little bit easier to sort of deal with everything. and the power curve is much more predictable across multiple levels which i like okay what about encounters and combat and that kind of thing. Again, they just simplified everything. I think they really just streamlined everything from three five and took out in Pathfinder. They took out stuff so that it's just less crunchy. So when I play Pathfinder one week and then play five e the next, I'm like, oh, I don't have to worry about half these rules. That's nice. But 
st- I still have enough crunchiness where I can go in and do my rules calculation and optimize my min max fun character. I st- you know I spend a minimum of five hours per character I'm going to play in a campaign of at least five sessions. Yeah, like a disclaimer: you when you play role playing game video games, you spend a lot of time looking at skill trees and figuring out. I will read every skill tree of a. I will I will read every class and every skill in every class before I decide which class I'm going to play, and I'm probably going to watch a couple of videos to make sure that I don't regret my choices. Yeah. Later to do yeah. it, yeah. yeah. Whereas I'll be like, no, turn around, go, but go in the corner. Like, yeah, who can- like, there's no story in the corner. I want to go to the story now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what don't you like about Fifth Edition? It's too crunchy. Uh, you don't don't give me a baited answer. No, right? it's not. I I'm trying. Having played some other systems, or just been messing around, I guess, with different stuff, or talking about talking about Pirate Borg. I a couple are I'm running a, a a session right now and there's like wait you can do what and I had to like get into it and now there, there's a, there's enough exceptions to all the different rules from the different books that sometimes it gets too deep into the reaction of everything or like you can do this and therefore that and you can cast two spells because of this rule I don't like the if then then if then then statements so I think the more that I play I just I just want to make more blanket rulings like you can do that because it's fun or you can't do that. Let's move on. I don't like that part. I, it's too crunchy. Too crunchy. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. In your opinion at the moment, what do you think OSR games are like? Like, have, have, You've never played an OSR. I've never officially played an OSR game. Never no. played Morkborg or Pyroborg or mm-hmm. the Black Hack or BX. No. You've never played any of these games. No. I don't even know what BX is. Yeah, basic expert. This is like what it all comes. Oh from. yeah, you're, you're just talking ba- about that. basic yeah. expert. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, no. By the end of the week, you will definitely yes. know yeah. what BX is. I'm gonna play these games. I'm, and I'm gonna, but so this yeah. is a great entry point. Like as I consider myself an OSR enthusiast and creator, my brother has never played an OSR game. This week we're gonna play some and. We're going to see what he thinks about it, right? What? So what do you expect an OSR game to be like? Let's start as a player. I guess I expect it to be lots more of like talking about the story and talking about what you're doing and significantly less skill checks and then combats overall being significantly shorter because you'll die super fast. So I think... I, my personal stress of dying is is very high. I don't like it. So that's just, I'm very interested to see how I come out having died many times by the end of the week. Um, I mean, people you know. always say that, uh, like Mork Borg and even Pirate Borg, though, like, oh, it's so deadly. But like, it's not that deadly because because of Devil's Luck. Because of Devil's Luck, which yeah. was a, a specific to this this sure. game, but luck mechanics where you can spend points to stop damage or re-roll dice. And yeah, stuff, and yeah. as a party, I mean, you'll have on average two to four of those each, and you can use them to re-roll any roll. Yeah. I'm actually really looking forward to that. I've played like Cortex system and older systems that had plot points, quote unquote, that you could spend to do stuff. I am looking forward to going back to that. I like Star Wars had force points where you got to be in the original edition. It was like epically awesome. I am looking forward to saving my points, trying not to get too risky with anything until I'm like, oh, this is epic. I want this to be an epic moment. And then max damage. Yeah. 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 I roll max damage. I go out all out. I spend a devil or devil's luck point to not take damage. I'm excited to see what that's like. And if the dice just let me down and I don't have fun because of it or if the dice let me down and that's it is fun because of that you know yeah i found that playing with you in the past that when your character doesn't do well you don't have fun yeah that's and my, definitely true my experience with the osr is it's the opposite I, that's that's exciting like starting with negative two and a bunch of your primary building a wizard in quotes with a negative two and in intelligence yeah is actually really fun yeah when you don't like when you're not attached to this like oh this is my character for the next six months i think this is a, a my prediction in 5e there is a correct way to do many things that yeah. like and i'm sure many people can be like that's not true there's no correct but i mean statistically speaking like every point that you have increases your chances by five percent and because the bad guys stats change they get harder you need to be better so you need there's a power curve yeah that all sort of matters. Like if I'm going to, I don't want to miss my attacks half the time because I made a suboptimal character. I will not have fun. But in Pirate Borg or in games like this with standard DRs all being 12 most of the time, I'm interested to see 
how that changes my own interaction. That's like, hey, a minus two just means it's like it's not that much harder. Well, and like, I think the other thing, the big difference that I've seen from the OSR to five E is like if you're watching Lord of the Rings, instead of watching like Aragorn and Boromir kill orcs, yeah, you're watching like the town that got slaughtered and those two kids got away in Rohan, and you're right. playing those two kids, yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, maybe you aren't going to deal 80 damage to the dragon and kill it, but like maybe your story will be better. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter. I don't know. One thing I'm, I love leveling up. It's my favorite thing to do. So that part will be interesting playing long term. Like, am I ever going to be able to do that or am I just going to die beforehand? And Yeah, I think, know. I think there's plenty of opportunity for gaining experience is what we call it in Pirate Borg, if that's what you're referring to. It's yeah. definitely different. You don't yeah. like sit there and pick your next thing. Yeah, you just like roll one well, stat. You could, I mean, even you could be picking them, but you're only getting one out of six or eight options. You know. Yeah, and your like stats it. might actually go down. You, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that. I mean, but I, I love like, this. It's Ooh. like, oh, you've you've taken on. It's kind of like Darkest Dungeon. You've taken on some trauma. Yeah. You're actually not as smart as you were anymore. Okay, so what about as a as a dungeon master, as a game master, what are you expecting the OSR to be like? How are you expecting it to be different? What do you think you're going to like? What do you think you're not going to like? So I think once I get comfortable with the system, I'm going to be more comfortable doing anything. Like I sometimes in five e, I'm like, ah, oh, I can't, I can't throw a basculus at him. Like, what if it turns them all to stone? Well, I got to throw actually two baskets at them because there's five of them. So that'll be like, now I'm really might kill them all. But I did that adventure and they took zero damage. One person did turn to stone, but they fixed it. I don't have to like worry about that as much because first off, if I throw two baskets at them and they kill everybody in the party or most of them or whatever, they're just like, ah, here's a new character. Like, let's just keep going. And it's like pound your drink and roll, roll again, you know? And so it's less stressful. So I think in that regard, I will be less stressed overall. It's and when, kind of like how I stopped worrying and learned to love the bomb. What's the name of that movie? Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, yeah. Cut um, this. Cut this question. Out. <laughs> so on one hand, I think I will be more relaxed on whatever we're doing because the rules. They also, they have devil's luck. I could always like give them extra luck points if like I felt like they needed it. Or whatever, or let them die, so, or let yeah, or just let them die, and like they get a new character, it's like not such a big deal. But on the flip side, I'm worried that it'll be harder. Like my favorite thing is to attach backstory with characters, and I'm not, I'm gonna have to just be a different GM until I sort of figure that part out. So you, that part I'll be learning about. You mean because you won't know the characters as well, you won't be able to. I think even if I learn them, the character could die literally any minute. You know, like in 5e, it's hard to die, especially, oh, yeah. especially if there's a cleric yeah. in the group and they're like, ah, bonus action, you're Yeah, healed. there's no death like, saves. And yeah. I mean, Mark Borg, if you go negative, you're dead. Right. No save, no roll, you're dead. Yeah. You know. They stop at zero, though, right? Like, No, they don't. So People, people two- ask that, but you, that's just, you're assuming that from other games. If you get to zero, uh, you are broken. Right. You roll you a D4. Roll dice. Yeah. If you go negative, you are But if I'm at two hit dead. points and I take four damage, you I'm dead. dead. Yes. Yeah. All right. So yeah. that's like, you got devil's I've, luck or? I've considered, that? well, that's the thing. You got devil's luck. I, I've considered changing that in Pirate Borg to you always roll because it gives you an opportunity to have more people missing limbs, which is very, mm, very piratey. Very on brand. Yeah. But it's based off Mark Borg. So for now, we're going to we're going to leave it as sure. is. we'll see how this week goes, because there'll be lots of playtesting this week. My fear is that it's just always a beer and pretzel experience. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people but, expect that going in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think it depends on the group. I mean, yeah. I think that if you're churning TPKs every week, people are not going to want to play for a, a year. Right. But yeah. if you run Pirate Borg in a way where your characters are smart and you don't throw too many things at them, you a character who gets to gain experience six times is going to be a pirate legend. Yeah. And that could be a really cool, that could be really fun. Also, there's something exciting. That's like, Oh, my character has gained experience six times and everyone at the table goes, what? I mean, I also think that this is one of the things that it's like, it's we're technically playing dungeons and dragons, or I guess we're technically not, but I think people think, Oh, it's D and D four hit points. But like, how many hit points do you think you as a human have? Like if you went to combat with a, with a goblin, how long, how many, hits could you take before you were dead two if he has a dagger or like if you're yeah. a pirate on a real pirate ship like yeah. how long so i think people are like oh it's too deadly what's like well it's 
also a little bit more realistic. realistic. Yeah. So it's like, well, I don't want to die. Like when we did the live stream with Jacob Hurst, mm. his character was like, oh no, I'm noping. I'm, I am running from this right now. And he yeah. would hide. Yeah. And I was like, that's not good for the combat, but like, right. that's what somebody would do. Yeah. That all makes sense. But like, <laughs> I don't want to spend my free time role playing a coward, you yeah, know. Yeah, no, even fair. though that I might be a coward if <laughs> yeah, a goblin ran at me with a pointy dagger. Well, like, I think if the point yeah. of your pirate, especially if you're doing like a West Marches large world campaign yeah. with people coming in and out, the point could become to become rich, not to kill everybody. Mm. And you might be able to do that, being like, we want to go into that and take them. We want them to surrender, not right. we want them to pull out their guns and shoot us. Which there, something I'm really looking forward to is the morale roles. You know, I've played Warhammer Fantasy, for instance, revolves heavily around morale roles and stuff and checks, and that's in Pirate Borg. Is that in Morkborg also? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's from BX. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah. that part's cool. That's like it's built in that you don't have to fight every monster to the death like some monsters probably will never break but i mean you may not have noticed but there's also a reaction table yeah and the like reaction table i mean feel I, about you like yeah. a dm could run i mean especially if you're running a piratey pirate campaign you could roll that for every single pirate you run into and half of them could be your homie right it doesn't have to always you yeah. know oh, just because you run into like an evil undead pirate captain well maybe he's looking to hire pirates like it doesn't have to always be you know yeah do we have any closing thoughts that we want to address? So I'm really looking forward to just how the feel of player facing dice rolling is that the players roll the dice for the monsters and themselves. And I roll hardly anything uh, as the know, DM as the DM. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to that. It also means that like no one's fudging dice, which I rarely do anyways. So there's like, uh, Oh, you critical. Oh, you fumbled. The whole table can see it. Like you got any devil's luck. Sorry, yeah, man. Yeah. You got to deal. You know, it's kind of the fate is in your own hands when as the player. So if you crit, it's your fault. And the like, you know, you knew what was in front of you. All that part's really cool. And it helps the aspect of like the players not understanding they were fighting a CR, you know, 27 monster, even though I like gave them all the keywords like. It, there's a thing that's like, uh, dude, the guy's got a sword. All swords are deadly. Or he's got a musket. That's even worse. Like, you yeah. know how deadly those are. Or it's 30 feet tall. What are you doing here? Yeah, like, yeah. come on. You know, so they know that if their character dies in that, like, it's very, it's much more transparent in the Borgs, I think, than in 5e. Right. Yeah, um, I'd say in the OSR. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to enjoying that aspect. Yeah. yeah. And we'll see on both, both sides of the coin of that. Tyler plays Pirate Borg for the first time. All right, we've returned. We are at Friday morning. Yar. At Origins. Yeah. Tyler, you've played your first Pirate Borg OSR experience sure game. Did. Yeah. What are your thoughts? It was a blast. It was super fun. You know, everyone played different characters. Half of us rolled up new characters, like our own, and uh, half of us used just like a pre-gens. Um, you mean you made made new ones on the spot, and then other people, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We we had brought some pre gen characters that I hadn't even looked at. We just I just hit the button. Yeah, it was it was fun. It's always like with a new with a group of people who don't know each other. Like nobody wants to step on someone else too much. Um, but as far as the system, it was it was cool. I ended up rolling like maximum hit points. So I wasn't actually that squishy, which is, of course, what I was afraid of. Yeah, you had like 10 hit points. I had 10 hit points. And then the only spell, or we had two spells, but one of the spells in the group that another player had was to heal D8 hit points. So I got hit for like eight damage, and then he healed me a bunch, and then I got hit more damage, and then he healed me again. So I ended up taking like 14 damage in the first fight, when that was more hit points than the rest of the players at the table combined. I mean... 14 times more than some people. Yeah, yeah. Two players only had one hit point. Yeah. But the Devil's Luck mechanic where you can spend it to reroll or cancel fumble or or reduce the damage by D6, that got used a lot. So it can really manage, like, if you don't get in too many engagements in a single day, you can regenerate your Devil's Luck points so that you don't die. That was cool. I really like having epic points of any kind in any system like star wars had force points and stuff like i think it allows for cooler storytelling moments which is fun yeah it lets you manage when when you think you should succeed or when you shouldn't yeah yeah and also like just to be like oh you rolled a random dice like someone shoots you with a you know a little knife and they <laughs> roll they roll a crit and it killed you max damage and you're like wait what like this isn't even, this is like some goon like this isn't 
But I mean, yeah. like, I think that's the thing. We we're, like we were just, before we started recording. We we're talking about maybe raising the hit point minimum. Mm. But like, you should die from a knife stab. Yeah, there is a thing that like, if someone pulls out a knife, I'm definitely. I didn't have it too much this session, but I do have it overall. Like, I have a little bit more of the fear of God in me from a stranger with a knife than I do in Dungeons and Dragons. Like, a thug pulls out a knife in D and D. Like, I don't really care. Like, I'm gonna smite him to death, but. He could kill any one of us in a group, you know, in Pirate Borg or yeah. Work Borg, which is cool. You know, it's also thinking a different way of like, oh, at any second, I got to be able to toss this character aside and play a new character, you know? Yeah. One thing I really enjoyed was I, I've run two sessions so far and everybody starts really, really low. I, like there are a lot of like, oh, I have a D4 to attack and I have one or two hit points, but I let everybody gain experience after the first combat. It was just like leveling up. Yeah. yeah. But then it's like, oh, you went from one hit point to all of your stats are better. Mm -hmm. And now you have seven hit points. That is a really interesting thing that you like roll. If you roll above your stat on a D6, your stat goes up. And yeah. since my stats all started either negative or zero, it was like, oh, all but one stat went up. I rolled yeah, one, and one. If you roll a yeah. one, they go down, which is yeah. also fun. Yeah. So one stat went down. I was actually really afraid of that. It's like, what if I have a plus three? And then it goes down. But all, the, all my crappy stats got better, so that felt cool. So I think the other thing that in your game where I like kind of nipped it in the bud, we started combat and the first round went like five E, mm -hmm. like a boring five E game, not exciting one where everyone yeah it was our combat where everyone was like I attack I attack, I attack. and yeah. I was like guys, there's no attacks of opportunity. If you go do cool things with your turn, it, it'll be a better for the story and b I'll be much more likely to like I guess reward it if I if I can you know. Yeah, and that was a good reminder. I had to be reminded of that. That's like, oh yeah, I can just run. I can run down this banister like I'm Jack Sparrow and woo, 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 and get to somebody else and not be in so much danger. Yeah, which is so cool. Somebody did that, and I was like, wait, they shouldn't be allowed to do that. But that was the five E DM in me being right. like, oh wait, yeah, no, they should be able to do whatever they want. Yeah. In fact, like this could be theater of the mind. They don't have to be on this grid. Yeah, the skeletons, of course, could have done that also, but. You know, from a story, a skeleton's probably not going to go shambling down a railing like I did. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have any favorite moments? Favorite moments. Oh, I definitely. My favorite moment is we had like a, a priest of the the dark prince in our group and he ended up mm -hmm. becoming our captain. And he's just like, is there a church in this town? And we're like, yeah. And, oh, and, my God. And yeah. he goes to the church and he's like, meets the Padre. He's like, hi, Padre. They're like, do you know that uh, the dark prince is your father? And the, pri and the priest was like, what? No, there's only one God. And then he just throws a grenade in his face and kills the priest. Yeah. In I the mean, middle of the church. To put this in perspective there are six important NPCs in the stock adventure that comes with Pirate Borg and the Curse of Skeleton Point, and one of them is this Abbot, who like none of them have to be an important role, but yeah. there are there are only six pictured. You know, he has a whole column of his stats and what he wants and what he doesn't want. And the guy he walked in and threw a grenade and killed him like right away. It's like, well, I don't have to worry about that guy. Wanted <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, another player was just pointing out. It's like at conventions, you know, it goes off the rails real fast because there's kind of no consequences is when you're like in one shots you know you kind of do whatever you want i i, I mean I I, while i agree with that statement i think that that's how this game should be oh like every session yeah, yeah. i think it should be yeah. like it like i don't think off the rails is necessarily bad in pirate board no i don't either i mean unless yeah. if you guys are have all gained experience a bunch and then you're you've got your own ship yeah you maybe would be less likely to like you know throw a grenade on your own ship yeah. but i didn't die so in my mind, I still have White Blood is, was the name of the character. Like, he could still be around for later. I just rolled random name, by the way. That's what it came up with. <laughs> you know, and, you're, you're not a neo-Nazi? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh. So that part's cool. So it, I'm, I'm curious about after I've played like five or six games, how I respond to it. Because I love building a story. But if my, you know, as the characters die, I'm also going to learn to enjoy different aspects of it. You know, it's different, but I definitely enjoyed it. Everybody that came by and I was talking about the game at our booth, I was like, I had a blast. I played it for the first time yesterday and it was totally true. Like, I mean, I think that if time. you if you have a healing zealot in your group and your players are smart and everybody gets past the first level mm -hmm. or the second level, if you will, you could definitely run a full campaign. Yeah, like not like stay the same character yeah, for a while. And yeah. build a story around them and then have more meaningful character deaths yeah which is i think that's how like bx is that's how like yeah it, you're pretty squishy in a lot of these osr games or even the original old school ones 
And then if you make it through, then you, the, oh, though well, this is a guy worth telling a story about. Yeah. You know, which is cool. It's sort of like you have to earn your right to be a hero, which is much more like real life. That's yeah. That's, you know? that's what I'm saying. And I, I think that's exciting. It's fun for one shots where everyone just gets, you know, new characters and gets killed. But I think you could definitely turn it in a campaign. You have to have a group that is willing to make their own stories, though. It's not the character sheets aren't going to like and, yeah. and a lot of 5e games since that's kind of what this episode's about. It, it It's like, oh, well. My character grows because I've got more abilities from the book, and now right. I know how to do more things, and that makes the thing more exciting. Like, no, this is going to be much more of your, like, the cool thing is the the new ship that you took, or the island that you are now owners of, yeah. or, or whatever happened to your character's backstory, you know? The, the story drives your level up rather than your abilities driving but i mean that's how book would be you know books are going to be like oh on page 47 aragorn learned a new swirl attack right and now he can double press x i mean in my 5e campaign that i'm running like one of my players gained an aura ability and he could not i was like i need you to justify how you have this or like it show us that you have it in game and he like couldn't do it for a couple sessions yeah so eventually, I, t- I did it for him. But it was definitely like, oh, we're not leveling up because the story really said that he should. It's yeah. just like, all of a sudden, you have this now. When you gain experience in Pirate Borg, there's, if you roll a six on the among the dead men you find table, mm. you learn a ritual. And like if you just fought a bunch of pirates in a bar, maybe they had a ritual in their pocket, but like Where did that come on from? the ritual page, there's a, st- there's a uh, note about how these can be learned like, serendipitously through people's whose minds are prepared mm. you know so, but mm. i do think that it really helps one of the sides the, the gm or the player needs to figure out is this yeah. ritual on a scroll or is it you know are there any particular mechanics that you liked or disliked yeah um i really like that devil's luck regenerates like on a sit on a long rest uh, as long as you spend it yeah um, so you, overnight yeah yeah overnight yeah yeah so there there was a cool thing that being like if you don't use it you sort of lose it i mean you you still have it but there's like a using it is more beneficial than not using it because if you know if you feel like you're about to go to port and rest or you could make it to safety after this fight like we were fighting this big bad and i was like oh if i hit this guy this captain on another ship i was like if this attack hits instead of misses i think i kill him because i think he's at one hit point and then i the combat's probably over because we've taken over the ship like that's better to use of that rather than just hanging out and waiting to see if I got attacked or something, which made me a little bit more like willing to spend them because I knew I was going to get them back, which I really enjoyed. Yeah. Like an inspiration. You people hold it all the time because I need to save it for that thing. I re- that one thing. Yeah. yeah. And devil's luck is like, well, especially the spell casting classes. They get, like the guys were rolling like threes and fours yesterday. Yeah. So that, like every day they would have like a stack of coins. Yeah. And they would be like, I, I'm going to spend it up. Oh, they would spend like four coins to get one thing done. Yeah. You yeah. know, and you can do that, right? You can spend multiple coins to you can do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. That's it's like, there's just sort of less restrictions overall. And that makes for more fluidity, which is cool. Yeah. And I mean, you know, so the sorcerer with one hit point lasted pretty long. Yeah, yeah, you he know? did. Yeah, and the, well, I mean, in the in the second game that we played, sure. and then she got annihilated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is it was fun. The mechanic I I didn't like is that this is sort of maybe more of a one shot thing, but the ability I rolled was like I can reroll flintlock abilities or flintlock pistols faster, and I can shoot up to three pistols in a single turn, which is a cool ability. But I didn't start with a pistol, so. I, I don't even think I fired the pistol the whole game. So I never used that ability. Yeah, that's just the nature of the beast. It's not always going to be like that. I totally get that. That's just what I rolled for that thing. I guess that's not an oh. overall mechanic. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, you know, in the, w- what we're doing for this con is everybody starts on a ship and then they immediately go into a combat. But, like, if you started at a port, you could spend the session zero or your first couple minutes acquiring you know yeah a pistol with your money spending spending the right time to get through with it like oh you don't have enough money i'm gonna try to rob somebody and then get enough money to go buy a pistol or find someone who has a musket and take it you know yeah now let us listen to the tale of tyler the first time pirate borg gm All righty, it's Saturday morning Yar. at Origins 2022. Tyler, you've officially GM'd your first game of Pirate Borg, your first OSR GMing experience. That I have, sir. 
in a brief sentence, how would you describe your experience? It was the single best one shot I've ever participated in, let alone run. Wow. <laughs> it was awesome. That's a tall order. Yeah. I've had some other, some, there's some other one shots that, that are tied or come really close, but I would have really awesome group that was into just doing shenanigans and I just adopted a very yes and um, attitude to it all that like, instead of trying to stop them from doing that or be like, no, that doesn't work. Or the person you're talking to doesn't go along with it. It was kind of like, oh, oh, yo, sure. You want to worship Nurgle? Okay, great. Let's go with that. And, And the whole group just loved it. What do you think the biggest differences were between um emotionally now being you know 12 hours removed from it looking back at it the biggest thing is just the speed at which combat moves is rapidly fast like at one point there were six players and they got attacked by six skeletons and it's just like all of you each get attacked by skeleton everybody roll defense d4 damage you know if you get hit and players could do it themselves and people were throwing devil's luck left and right you know to stop the damage that was really fast and even when we had like Our larger combat at the beginning where they're boarding a ship, it was pretty easy just to point to a player like, what do you do? What do you do? Okay, here, you know, what's going on? And they describe it. And the shenanigans was a lot higher instead of doing the tactically sound thing. Like the two guys with rifles were pretty much always just shooting rifles. But I had one guy willing to spend multiple turns to reload a swivel gun on his ship. And I was like, well, they're not loaded anymore. He's like, okay, I'll reload them like with anything I can find. I was like, all right, this is going to be a fun shenanigan. So there's a lot more hijinks. And it just made us laugh. And in 5E, there would be a lot was like, okay, well, you got to make a, you know, this check to do that. And then this check to do that. And then spend a four on action. And you can't run through them because of attacks of opportunity. And for this, it was all just like, hey, can you beat a DR-12? Like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. People were jumping off of like pirate towers in the sky, you know, zip lining from one tower to the other in a castle, yelling Geronimo. Uh, and I no, think that was epic. I think no attack of attacks of opportunity is like I would almost put that in my five E games now, yeah, because it just encourages a much more like cinematic combat. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I, it's uh, interesting because last night while you were running that, I was playing in a in a Pirates of the Spanish Main Savage Worlds game, and I had a moment where you know I'm playing like I like to see games played, and like we're sitting in this tavern, and the British come in to shoot us or whatever, mm-hmm. and I'm the captain. I just like get up and I'm like I run toward him full steam with my blunderbuss, and everyone at the table's like, no, no, don't do that, like, and I'm like. No, that's what this guy would do. Like, mm. I mean, I know you can do that in other games, but I feel like it gets so punished to make what bad. What was the bad part about doing that? Uh, just like there, I would have been better to take cover or to not have taken steps. Like I did one where I like oh. jumped up on a table and then jumped down on a guy's skull and then attacked. Yeah. And like, he's like, well, that's a minus two. And I was like, okay. And he's like, yeah. but I'll give you plus one because it's cool. And I was like, you should not have punished me for stepping on the guy's skull. That yeah. Kind of- but rules is written. That's but like, like what it says. when they play yeah. it by the rule, which I understand, like they should run it by the rules because I want to mm. play the game by the rules. But when there aren't rules for that, yeah, all of a sudden there's like a whole level of story that happens. There is a flip side to it that like what you do sort sometimes matters less. It's like it doesn't it almost doesn't matter what you say or do. It won't affect the dice roll. It's still going to be our dr twelve. But, yeah, but that's the that's the the difference though is that it's, yeah. you're not playing. Like, in my mind, I don't really care about, like, winning the combat from a mechanic standpoint. Yeah. 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 I, I just want it to be fun and, and yeah. memorable. And that was definitely the case. I mean, our fight was they, like, went up through this rookery tower and set it on fire to try and get the birds out. But it was they set it on fire under them. So then they had to run out of this teeter tottering pirate ship that was on top of the tower and it was like falling. So they all ran to the front and threw a spear with a rope tied to it. And it went into the the governor's daughter's bedroom and they zip lined into it. And she got all like um, she was like, what are you doing? And then that made a bunch of noise. And then the giant conquistador came and. Then they were like fighting in their bedroom, but it's really small and people were taking hostages and you know that they, they uh, it was awesome. It even gets even more epic. It was, it, but they all did that. They all was like, did you make your rolls? Like you're going to plummet to your death if you don't make this roll. And they spent like five devil's luck to get one guy to make his roll because they all rolled a maximum devil's luck. Yeah. So nobody died in our game because they had all that, but it was so fun. It was fantastic. Did you have any favorite mechanics or least favorite mechanics? As a GM now that, you know, not mm. not compared to what we talked about yesterday. Yeah, actually, my favorite mechanics was the 
large quantity of roll tables easily accessible and like encouraged to use. And I know that you can use these roll tables on like in any game, but since it's so built into Pirate Borg, I had one player say out loud, like, oh, I love roll tables. And I was like, oh, well, in that case, you know, people said, what's on the body? We use the loot the body table. He got he rolled a treasure map. Then I switched to the treasure map table and I was like, I'm going to go with whatever's rolled. And they rolled that. And so now they knew that the treasure map was going to be able to be seen by the light of the moon. So they want to go to the castle so they can look at it and like names of people. And at one point, this guy got this spear and he's like, oh, yeah, I want to name it. And we rolled on a pirate ship naming table and just used that. And it was called Necrobile. And everyone's like, your spear's called Necrobile. Like, that's so badass. So I just leaned into the I'm not in control of the story as much as you're in control of the story and the rolls that you make on the dice. And that led to even more like fun craziness rather than like a strict thing you know in 5e i'd have to like more gauge exactly what i wanted to have happen they might get an item or a ritual that's too powerful and unbalance everything and this was just kind of like it whatever is rolled like the more ridiculous it is the more fun we're gonna have so i think that mechanic as a whole and it was really just fast to defend them players rolling defense allowed me to attack multiple players at once and the players didn't just sit there watching me do stuff uh yeah i did i did yeah. that so much yesterday it was like 10 minutes between yeah times for me to talk unless i was being like an interjectory player which gets annoying if you do it too right. much there's a thing too especially if a gm ever gives the players an npc that helps them where inevitably the npc is attacking the monsters and so now the players are just sitting there watching the gm play with himself and it's like oh, the worst it's like uh yeah, so, I mean, avoiding that or whatever, but making all the attacks be like, oh, I, I went to pick up dice and it was like, no, 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 actually, you roll it because you're the one that's going to be affected by it. That kept people involved. And when somebody failed a roll and they were going to die and someone used a devil's luck on them to save them, that also was like, oh, the person is for devil's luck is paying attention to everyone's, like, who has the lowest health so that they can save their life, which kept them engaged. I liked all that stuff a lot. I also yeah. like that the, the devil's luck is... You can reduce damage to yourself, but you can only re-roll other people's rolls. Yeah, because people definitely want to be like, "Oh, I'll stop that two damage that will save your life," and I'm like, "You can't do that one. You got to you have to you got to roll the dice luck it again." Yeah. yeah, and see if you do. And one guy had to roll. I don't know if I just said this, but one guy had to roll like four or five devils luck in order to save his life. But it was like near the end. It was in like the last twenty minutes of our game, so it was really epic. He would have fallen to his doom otherwise. I'm sad that you don't have didn't have any player deaths. <laughs> <laughs> I am too, actually. I, I tried, and it became clear near the end that, like, I intended to have more skeletons show up, and they definitely would have killed some players. You know, they're on the last legs. But at this point, they've jumped from a burning pirate ship, ziplined through the air, throwing acid at a giant conquistador, and jumped out of the... Oh, I didn't, so I got to say how it ended. Okay, so the ending, they had ziplined over from this this teeter-tottering treasure galleon that had that's on top of a tower, right? And the treasure galleon was tipping over when they ziplined in, and they all made their rolls with the Devil's Luck stuff, and they crashed in, and they were immediately fighting this conquistador. And one of the players, he's like, I pick up the spear, and I'm gonna you know chuck it at the conquistador. Necrobile? And I, necrobile, yeah. And I'm like, make a check, because you have to notice something. It's really important. And he did notice it, and it's like you look down, and the rope that was attached to the um, to the spear is doing that zzz thing. It's just getting pulled <laughs> downwards from the like crashing galleon, and he's like, "Oh shit!" Like in my head, I'm like, "He's got to get rid of it. Like he can't use that. It's gonna yank him out of the window." And he's like. I throw it at the conquistador. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, and he rolled perfect. I was like, okay, his armor might deflect it. So if he doesn't deal any damage, it won't get stuck in. And it might not stick, but he, it dealt like they rolled the same numbers. So it got stuck in and he, but he passed his check. So it ripped him out and like pulled him to the window. And, but he like made the check. So he's like holding onto the window, but damaged. And I had him reduce right. his armor. It's like the alien and alien resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting like, sucked out the window. Yeah. And the players like love, Loved that, and then two players tried to drop kick him out of the window, but they both rolled twos. So then they're falling and they're just laying on the ground. The conquistador like smashes on them, steps on them, and so then the other guy he thinks that Veronique's his mother because he's he played a very crazy character, which was super fun. And he goes and he grabs Veronique and jumps out the other window of the tower. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, Mom, safety! And they kill the conquistador with some acid. And then, like, out of ridiculousness, the two guys on the ground are like, "All right, I grab the conquistador's arm 
and I jump out the window and I'm like, catch me. And the other guy's like, I jump out the window and I grab her foot. And I was like, okay, that's going to be really hard. DR 14. And he yeah. grabs it. So he's leaning out the window, grabbing her foot and she's leaning down with the, with the skeleton arm, arm. the skeleton <laughs> arm. And the guy who jumped out with Veronique is like, okay. And he's like, do you want to catch it? And he's like, yeah, I throw Veronique out of my arms, holding onto her leg up into the air as I'm falling to grab a hold of her lover's conquistador's like arm mm -hmm. that she sees. And I was like, all right, that's super hard. And he rolls like a 19 yeah. and the whole table like flips out. And so they're dangling from this tower, like resting. Oh, man. And it was to everyone was like, congratulations. You've, you know, defeated the conquistador skeleton point. Like is epic. That's awesome. Lots of cheering, and everyone was like, Nurgle, Nurgle. <laughs> They're like, why can't this be our weekly group? <laughs> yeah, they they had they all plotted at the end. I was like, guys, you led this. Like, I just went, yes, and. They were plotting for me, let's be clear. Yeah, they really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a great game, Luke, so well done. Oh, it sounds like they, it sounds like they really enjoyed the adventure. Yeah, they did. And the, I mean, having somebody being a zealot and me, and me being like, so who is your, who do you worship? And then being like, oh, can I worship Nurgle? Oh, they didn't roll. They just, they made that up. They couldn't find the table and I couldn't remember. I was helping another player. It's like next to the, it's on the columns next to the picture. Oh, right, right. But having, picking their own God is. Yeah. yeah. She couldn't find it and she just asked if, if she could pick it. I was like, yeah, absolutely. Especially because I know Nurgle. So I was like, that's great. I feel like they sh yeah. you should always let them pick. If, yeah. In this game. You know. And they were so they were illiterate and they had a book and they went to the Padre in the church. I'm like, can you translate this? And the Padre is so poor that he's like, I'll give you money. And he sees the money and he's like, yeah. But then the Padre realizes he can just write down anything he wants and they'll give him more money. So he's like, um, this is from Nurgle himself. He's speaking directly to you. He says, you must rebuild this church and give them money. And they went and got hundreds of silver pieces from other pirates. And uh, it was super, everyone just went with it. They're chanting and screaming, Nurgle, Nurgle. All the players in the hall hated us. I love that. So will you play more OSR games now? Oh, definitely. I think uh, my hesitation of it is greatly reduced. What was your biggest hesitation and how has that been reduced? It's always been... Player death. Right? Player death. But well, you didn't and kill anybody. <laughs> I didn't, nobody died in my game. I mean, I did try, but nobody died. And in, when I played as a player, I didn't die. I ended up like, it's just an interesting thing. But if I did die and all that, like you just keep going and have fun with it. And, and that would be okay. I do think it takes a certain kind of player. I think that if you to were... To be into dying every No, session. just into, to really get, to really enjoy the, the OSR. Just, yeah. Because I think if you're too attached to a character you might not enjoy the process but yeah. if you've played enough early D&D &D, at least for me I was like your first character you put all this work in and you expect these characters have these big story arcs mm -hmm. but I think after you've played 20 characters you're kind of like well what happens if I just make a random one yeah and like you end up finding more and en more enjoyable arcs or mm -hmm. if they aren't enjoyable the characters can just die and you can explore something else yeah you know? like I like the idea that like you don't know you're going to be a, a hero. Like if you're playing a, a vanilla 5e campaign, you're heroes. That's why you're playing. Yeah. Man. We're big damn heroes. Especially if you're going to get past level 5, like you're going to you're heroes and you have to fight things that are non-human for it to even be a challenge. Right. And I think this game and the others are in general like a skeleton with a knife should always be dangerous. Yeah. And it definitely was. You know, yeah. like and I think there's there's I can just imagine like a big like that scene at the end, like I'm picturing it like Kind of like when Frodo gets stabbed by the orc. Like, what if one of your dudes just gets Ooh. knifed in the back by a skeleton? That blade comes out through his mouth. Yeah. You know, and you're like, <laughs> oh, everyone's shoot. like, no, we, yeah. we played this poorly. Yeah, yeah. It definitely, there was risk to it, but also at a one shot at a con, like, it's the right group, definitely, to just be like, fuck it, let's do it, you know? Let's yeah. go for it. Yeah. I will also say, I think almost more importantly i think as i gm 5e i'm gonna use more osr stuff oh well and i mean like, that's the beauty of it is yeah. you can use everything yeah it's all portable it's so easily so hackable yeah. i mean and everything in pirate Borg, you can hack into any system and vice versa yeah. you know like there was stuff that the guy was doing in the savage worlds game last night yeah. where i was like he was doing the like as written navigation checks mm. and i was like oh that's a good i'm gonna use that for my i'm not gonna put that in pirate Borg, but i'll use it for my navigation my yeah because yeah. it was like, even pick, if... Cherry pick what you like. Yeah, it was like, I don't even know if it changed anything. Like, I was sitting there thinking, if we get there three days early or late, how is that going to change our gaming experience? Mm. But it didn't matter because the navigator and I were having so much fun role-playing what we were doing on the days. Yeah. 
Like it was like we could either go along the islands or cut across, mm. but we could get lost if we cut across, which mm. is accurate. Yeah. And he was like, "Oh no, I'm a great, I'm a great navigator. We're cutting across, you know." And mm. so then him and I would get drunk every night. It was like, yeah, just the fact that we did it was, you know, so bar- fun? beg, yeah. borrow, and steal, you know. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, do we have any closing thoughts? Pyroborg is awesome. OSR is really fun. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad yeah. I made a game you enjoy. Yeah. It would be really funny it's if like, I had made a game that you hated. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, definitely some nervousness to be like, I hope I like this. Like, it would suck to not like my own brother's game. But I loved it. I mean, it, I had yeah. so... I, I was blessed with a really fun group. And I'm definitely going to take that away that even my weekly group that I run, I'm definitely going to try and do more yes anding and random tables when they, when they apply. I think... I mean, to be honest, too, there is an element of like, we're at a con... So yep. only people who really like games come to cons. Yeah. We ha- people haven't been playing in person. It's a new game. It was Friday night. Like the conditions yeah. are good. Half the team had never they didn't know anything about it. They're just like I saw that it was a Morkborg port and I haven't even played Morkborg, but I heard good things. Yeah. So that's why I came. That, that was my know? other game was like we don't know what Pyroborg is and we just wanted to try out. Yeah. You know. It it was great and I'm looking forward to playing more. Hold fast, wretched sailor. We brace for the broadside barrage. First RPG you ever played? Star Wars RPG West End Games D6 version. Most recent RPG you've played? Pirate Borg. Favorite monster in the Monster Manual? Dragon, man. Red Dragon. Just classic. Do you have a, a, an age of dragon that you prefer? Like uh, I, pref- I enjoy the young dragons the most because they are the most accessible to table. Like you can't get an ancient dragon to table unless you got a bunch of level 15 characters or whatever. Favorite enemy in pirate Borg. Um, the bosun. Cause he like makes other skeletons around him better. I just love, he's got a whip and I just love the imagery of him being like, get back to work. You dirty skeletons. Favorite new game you saw at Origins? Uh, it's a board game called Old Tree. It's I think it's out. It's been out for a bit, but it's uh, Rangers rebuild a castle and then have a story based game in that castle. It looks really awesome. Favorite thing you purchased at Origins, and if that if you purchased that game, second favorite thing you purchased at Origins. I did not purchase Old Tree because it's just too big. I don't think I can fit it in my suitcase. But I did pick up some really awesome pirate dice that have like skulls and slashes on it instead. Uh, and that's pretty awesome. Favorite meal this week at the con? A pizza. Definitely pizza. We had pizza like four times. Specifically Jets pizza. Is the that's one right. The food court. System you've yet to try but want to. Uh, I'd love to try the Sea of Thieves role playing game. And I know absolutely nothing about it. I just like that video game a lot. You, Tyler Stratton, are seven, suddenly a 10th level PC. What class are you? Uh, I'm seven levels of Paladin and three levels of Bard. Add an entry to the what's in the cargo hold of the Ship of the Dead D100 table. Uh, it's a ship in a bottle, but when you look at it, it's an actual ship floating in water. And if you look even closer, there are people on the ship and they're you. Favorite size die? D, D, uh, D12. I mean, I know it's your favorite too. It's, it's I, I like it. D12. It's so cool looking. Favorite item that Justin of Severed Books and Exalted Funeral, who we spent the entire con with uh, at his booth, had for sale? Uh, his new mimic bags that are coming out were really fun to talk about a bunch. Um, I, think so the, like, I think the Kickstarter is live as this episode airs. I'll put nice. a link to it in the show notes. Heck yeah. So that was my favorite. And he had a cool game called Stitch Witch that was like women cut the hearts out of men in in the forest. And I helped sell several copies. That was fun. The Mimic Dice Bag actually comes with a little booklet for like naming your Mimic and its personality and stats. It's very creative. Brief message you'd like to share with Doug Shute from Free League and Victory Condition Gaming. Uh, You're awesome. Uh, I'm so glad I have your tops card because he was officially in the NBA uh, for a short period, and I think that's freaking sweet. Favorite libation or beverage during your RPG sessions? Uh, it's got to be Jameson Black Barrel. It's my favorite drink overall. Although, when we've been playing Pirates RPG stuff more, I've been drinking more rum, Sailor, Jer- Sailor Jerry, and I've been enjoying that. Video or computer game you've logged the most hours playing? 
Warhammer Total War series as a whole, I would say is probably the longest because I'll, I'll just I'll 100 percent that game if it, if it lets me. So I have several thousand hours in that, I think. Most annoyed you've ever been with me. <laughs> you know what the answer to this is. I know, but it's a good so, answer. So uh, I ordered a Professor Xavier um, trading card or card for uh, versus system in the mail. And my mom accidentally cut open the package, cutting the very top of the card off of it. But I was like, I don't know. I could still tape this together and like put it into a sleeve and maybe still play with it like I mean, unofficially. This is like 1998 or something, right? Yeah, uh, 2003. But yeah, what? Um, yeah, yeah, I was in high school and Luke, like you just you're trying to piss me off. So you're like, oh, yeah. And you like pull up the card and you pull some scissors and you cut it in half. And I freak out and you're like, oh, I destroyed your Xavier. It's like, no, no, it's okay. It was already cut. And I was like, no, it was still usable. And we got in a huge fight and I like flipped the table (laughs) and we got this argument about that if a motorcycle's front wheel is broken, but then you break the whole thing in half, it's like, it's not the same. And I think I stormed out. I think it's the most of it. Yeah. You looked at an important you. detail that you were playing with another Xavier and I pretended to pick up that one from the table and cut it. Oh yeah. That's yeah. why you so got so like, mad. Yeah. And then by the, when you, yeah. when, by the time you realized it was the one that mom had already cut in half, it was yeah. you were already pissed. I was already, my blood was already boiling over at that point. Like I, can't, I a, couldn't believe. Yeah. You were good, like laughing just like you're laughing right now at it. Such a good older brother memory for me. Such a dick move is what it was. <laughs> uh, you must live in one fantasy or sci-fi setting. Which do you choose? Fable three. Wait, that was really fast. Star Wars. I would definitely it's Star Wars world and all the awesomeness and cool we'll tech and the force. Um, Corellia, where they have all the shipyards. I think that's a cool planet. You can load and play through one encounter on the holodeck. What do you choose? Helm's Deep, Aragorn, 100%. A favorite moment you've ever had playing an RPG? Um, one time I convinced my friend Allie uh, that the bad guy was her sister. I mean, she was. but And then my friend Chad was like, no, she's the villain. I got to kill her. And so Allie turned around and attacked Chad. Uh, this is an all Jedi campaign. And she rolled a nat 20 and then rolled a random location and cut off his hand. Uh, on for what it was so she like kill cut chad's hand off with a lightsaber and then they fought and i was like this is the most epic thing that's ever happened in my life you've been listening to the ship of the dead podcast email your questions comments and buried treasure tips to ship of the dead at limithron.com You can support the program, join our Discord server, get early access to new episodes, and instantly download hundreds of battle maps, assets, and adventures at limithron.com slash Patreon. Tiers start as low as $2 a release, and you only get charged when I make something new. Pirate Borg, my rules-light, rum-infested hack of Morkborg, is available for pre-order at pirateborg.com. Ship of the Dead is produced by Limithron LLC. Our audio editor is Matt Kepler, and our music is by Alexander Miller.